That is our history right there. That's the history that our people don't want to deal with. So they don't watch 12 Years a Slave. They don't want to see Mandingo. They don't want to watch all those different roots. They don't want to see those movies because it deals with the trauma that we've been through and we don't want to tap into that thing. Because if we tap into that, guess what you'll do? You'll return to God and you'll return to who you are as a people. Right. Hey, hey, that the prophets are back teaching our people the truth. We are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. That is who we are. You know why men, black men kill each other? Because they don't see each other as Jesus Christ. We are Israelites from the time of the Jews. Let's go to Hebrews uh, 7 to 14. Because they don't see each other as Jesus Christ. Hey, What's your nationality? What's your nationality, Jeff? Israelite, brother. What's your nationality? You're right from everything that I've been putting together on my own. That's what you know. Hey, you say you want to know your nationality, right? Read Job 8 and 8. Job chapter 8 and verse 8. Go ahead. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. So the Most High God is telling the so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. When you look at that sign, to identify yourself as black means you identify yourself as a color in the crayon box, right? Yep. To identify yourself as an African American means you're identifying yourself as two so-called white men, Leo Scipio Africanus, who defeated Hannibal in the Second Punic Wars, and he called the land of Africa after his name, and Amerigo Vespucci. He was an Italian settler. He was the first one to settle over here in America and conquer this place here. And the, name, the land was named after him. Can we, can so-called black people come from two white men? No, right? So the question is, read that again. For inquire, I pray thee. So the Most High God is telling the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans to inquire. Inquire of what, read? Of the former age. Of the former age. And so when we first, when, I, when we first thought about it, we was like, damn. As a child, I used to wake up thinking, who were we before slavery? Because every time we go through Black History Month, what are the first people that they bring up? When you when you go through Black History Month, who do they say our fathers are? What do you learn about? They only bring up slavery from that point. Who are some oh. great Black men that we bring up, that we learn about? Martin Luther King, Medgar Evers, Evers, Malcolm, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey, right? Read that again. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. So the question should be, who were we before these men? That only goes back 40, 50, 60, 100 years. Who were the slaves that were brought over on those slave ships should be the question. What, who are our fathers? Read. And prepare thyself. It says prepare yourself. So we come out here every week, every Saturday, right here, in the midst of all nations, to, to prepare our brothers and sisters, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, to prepare them for what? And, pre and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. You must search for your fathers. Who are your forefathers? Who, sis, let me ask you a question. Who were the black people before slavery, sis? I don't know, sir. You don't know? That's what we're bringing out today. We're bringing out that the people that came over on slave ships are the, have the same descendants as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You are the children of Israel. That's right. Black is just a color in the crayon box. What does Israel mean? Let me get that prince that has power. What does Israel mean, though? What does Israel mean? I mean, what does African American mean? Does it have any meaning, any substance? It means that you've been taken captive by Leo Scipio Africanus and Amerigo Vespucci. Their forefathers conquered you. Right. But let's see what Israel means. Read. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 27. Hey, read with power, and he said unto him, uh -huh. what is thy name? He said unto him, what is thy name? Jacob wrestled with the angel. You heard that story before in the Bible, right? So now he said, what is thy name? He asked the angel, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Right? Read. And he said, Jacob. He said, my name is Jacob. Read. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. He said, your name is no more going to be called Jacob. What are you going to be called? But 
Israel. He said your name's going to be what? But Israel. Your name is going to be called Israel. Why? Read. For as a prince has the power with God. As a prince, y'all brothers have power with God. We Right now, we haven't tapped into that power that the Most High God has given us. Why? Because we don't know who we are. We haven't searched out our forefathers. We, we didn't come back to our heritage, our nationality. How do you get that power back with God? The officer was bringing it up before. How do we get that power back with the Most High God? Know who we are first. Know who we are, right? So let me see. You are, what's your nationality? What, what do you say your nationality is, bro? Yeah. I, I, I say You're from Israelite what I'm according to the Bible, right? Yeah. What do you say your nationality is? African American. So now we got to show you that you're not an African American. That you actually are Israelite according to the Bible so that you can do this. Give me Ecclesiastes 12. So that you can understand what God requires of you as a man. As an African American, God doesn't require of you nothing but to repent and to find out who you are. Search your fathers. Come back to your heritage. Once that seed is planted, now you have to find out your duty. So we're going to show you what God's duty is for all men. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So the Most High God said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is, this is the reason why we were created. This is the reason why the black man was put on this earth here. Read. Fear God. It says to fear God and do what? And keep his commandments. And to keep his commandments. So what does it mean to fear God now? What does that mean? Are we supposed to be afraid of God? Hey, sisters, again. Sisters, again. Are we supposed to be afraid of God? What does it mean to fear God? It's a dialogue, right? I mean, I'm yeah. exalting my voice because we commanded to preach the gospel this way, right? Yes, sir. But what, is it, what does it mean to fear God, sis? Um, like, not like actually fear, but know that he is like the most powerful person right. who can do whatever. And that's what we're taught, not to really, what kind of God wants you to be afraid of him, right? Yeah. Give me Psalms 119. Are we supposed to fear God? What is the fear of God? That's what we're asking our people out here. Read. Psalm chapter 119, verse 120. Go ahead. My flesh. Go ahead. Oh, read it, read it. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. It says, my flesh trembleth for fear of thee. So David, who wrote this psalm, said, my flesh trembleth for fear of thee, Lord, read. And I am afraid of thy judgment. He's afraid of what? Of thy judgment. He's afraid of God's judgments for us breaking his laws. There's a judgment for every... Let me show you one of God's judgments. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Is our, is our history written in the Bible to slavery here? No, right? Is our slavery written in this Bible? No, what we're going to show you is that our slavery is actually written in this Bible. It's actually judgment from the Most High God. That's right. Right. We didn't fear God enough to understand that what he wrote in the scriptures about our slavery was going to happen if we didn't read that in Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. Go ahead. But it shall come to pass. The Most High God is saying it shall come to pass. If what? If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If we did not listen to the Most High God. Now, who is God talking to? Because we're taught that the Bible... It's written for everybody. And that Christ came to save the whole world and all sinners in general, right? Well, we'll understand getting one in one. Deuteronomy 1 verse 1. Well, we must understand so-called black men because we have black men in front of us, right? So-called black men because you're actually Israelite men from the tribe of Judah. Right. Well, we, what we ought to show you is that there's no other audience in this Bible but the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. This right. Bible was only written by black men for black men. That's it. We wasn't taught that in the Christian church. We wasn't taught that through slavery. What were we taught in slavery? We was taught Christianity. We were given Christianity. Notice those two men were standing up there all day. Talking about God loves everybody, handing out flyers. Then once did they open their Bible up to show you in the Bible what they were saying? Or Bring it out. What they were saying in the Bible? That's how we were taught in slavery. Read right. that. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. How you doing, sis? What's your name? Shanti. Come in. Chastity. 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 How you doing? I mean, one of the third, we are Israel united in Christ, right? We're showing our people who we are according to the Bible. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Moses spake unto who? All Israel. It wasn't all of the nations out there in Moses' audience. Moses was not commanded by the Most High God to bring all nations out of Egypt. Right. He brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. So right. Deuteronomy, he said, read it again. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. These are the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. He only was speaking to the Israelites. Well, you'll find out a little bit later on that these are the so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans. 
that was the audience in the wilderness, and this is who, what the most I, who the most I talking to in Deuteronomy. Read that now, 28 verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. Go ahead. But it shall come to pass. Go ahead. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So it says, you Israelites, if you don't listen to the voice of the Lord thy God, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. To observe, to do all of his commandments, read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? If when he says all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee, if you don't do what I tell you to do, uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. It's a bad thing, right? So what would that be called? What were we talking about? It would be most high God's judgment on us for doing the wrong thing. The wrong thing. Right, right? So that's the fear of God. The fear is judgment. Now let's see what type of judgment the most high God puts on, on, on those people that Moses was talking to, which you find out, which is us anyway. Let's get straight to the point. Give me 28 verse 68. Bring it up. Deuteronomy to the 28 verse 68. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. One of those curses said that God was going to send the Israelites into Egypt again with ships. Now what is Egypt? What is that talking about? What is that Egypt talking about? Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. We're still dealing with the judgment of God for not doing what he said. Now we're going to deal with the slavery. Then we're going to bring it to present time. Some of God's judgment that we're dealing with now because we are going away from his laws. Read that. I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. He brought us out of the land of Egypt. Right? Out of the house of bondage. He brought us out of the house of bondage. Egypt is synonymous with bondage. What's another word for bondage? Slavery. Slavery. Captivity, right? Captivity. Go back to Deuteronomy 28 now. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. The Lord's going to bring you into bondage, into slavery. And how? How do we get over here? How was sure. our people carried over here? Sure. On slave ships, right? Read. Again with ships. With what? Ships. Read it again from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. The most High God is going to bring the Israelites into Egypt again with what? Ships. With ships. On slave ships. What nation of people came over in slavery on slave ships? Name another nation besides our people. What nation of people came over in slavery on slave ships? Can I ask y'all sisters a question? Real quick, sisters, not gonna attack you. I'm asking, what nation of people came over on slave ships? Say it real quick. Black people did, right? She's laughing, but it's serious. Why? Because knowing that, that identifies you of what your true nationality is, what your heritage is. It shows you that you're God's chosen people by knowing that. We're gonna show you, read. By the way, by the way, wherever I spake unto thee. The same way Moses said it was going to happen. This was written a thousand plus years prior to the transatlantic slave trade. It's a prophetic thing that Moses wrote, and it actually happened. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. We'll never see our homeland again. Now I'm gonna ask you a question, because right now we're dealing with our coming back to our heritage and nationality. We're searching our forefathers. What is our homeland? What is the motherland? Africa? Africa? Africa, right? Y'all are right. Africa is the homeland, right? But what country in Africa now? What country in Africa is the cradle of civilization, so to speak? Where people actually birth from? Let's get that. Let's see. Because what you'll find out, the craftiness of our enemies. What you gonna, you say Egypt? What you say? I was thinking that, but you know it's known as ancient Kemet, so. It, ancient Kemet, Ham, right? Egypt was called the land of Ham, or Ham's son, Mizraim, right? It was called the land of Ham. His, 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 Noah had three sons. The Most High God divided the lands according to the house of Israel, but Ham had that land down there. He gave the chosen land. Read that, though. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Go ahead. Yeah. But Jerusalem. But what? Jerusalem. Is what? Which is above is free. Uh huh. Which is the mother of us all. It says Jerusalem is the motherland. Now, when we think of Israel, Jerusalem, what part of the world do we think of? We think Middle East, right? We think of some Arab place, right? But when you look at Jerusalem on the map, exactly where is Jerusalem at? It's right there on the landmass of Africa, right? Yeah. But the so-called white man did what in his craftiness? He created the Suez Canal. You know the year? 1848. In 1848. So he created a, a Suez Canal, a man-made water to divide the lands and then called it the Middle East. Why? To deceive our people into thinking that this land has nothing to do with Africa. 
Right. So now we disassociate ourselves with Africa. When we think of Africa, we think of Egypt. We think of Ethiopia. We think of Ghana. We think of Nigeria. But we never think of Jerusalem. Read that again. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. It says Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Read. Which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem is the motherland. So knowing Jerusalem is the motherland, Moses said we shall never see our homeland again. What color was the first man that was created from the soil of Jerusalem? From the soil of that motherland. What color was that man? Genesis 2. Then we're going to go back to Deuteronomy 28, 68, because there's something heavy in there. What color was the first man? We know it. We hear it from all our comedic brothers, right? And they're not wrong from that. But the question is, how was it done, and who did it, and where was it done at? Get that in Genesis. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Remember now, Jerusalem you know? is the mother of us all. So what was that first man, and what color did he look like? How y'all doing? All oh, praises. Read. And the Lord died for men of the dust of the ground. The Lord God for man of the dust of the ground now. When you look at that ground back there, what color is it? What color is that, that soil? It's brown, right? Different shades of brown. As a matter of fact, the deeper you go, the darker it gets. So it's a God from original man from the dust of the ground. Read. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. So when the first man was created and when the original man was created, those were so-called black men. They were people with melanin in their skin. Right. We are the original man on this earth here. That's right. You understand that? There was no other nation, any other color on this earth until later on in Genesis. And guess what? That other nation was created by two black people as well. Well, let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So the Most High God said he's going to bring the Israelites into slavery again on what? What ships? On cargo slave ships. Right. There's no other nation on the planet Earth that went through slavery on slave ships. I don't want to hear about the Irish. I don't dare so I don't want to hear about the Holocaust. That has nothing to do with this captivity here that is written up in the Bible. Right. That's right. Absolutely nothing. Read. By the way, where have I spake unto thee? The same way Moses said it was going to happen. Thou shalt see it no more again. You will not see your homeland, the motherland, Jerusalem again. Read. And there, when we land over here on those slave ships, what's going to happen to our people? Read. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Going to be what? Sold unto your enemies. When we got off those slave ships, brothers. What happened when we docked in Charleston, South Carolina, or in Beaufort, South Carolina, or New Orleans, Louisiana, all over the coast of the East Coast, and along the coast, when we docked off of those slave ships, how y'all sisters doing? You need to come back here. When we got off those slave ships, what happened? Put on auction blocks. We were put on auction blocks. Auction slave blocks. That is our history right there. That's the history that our people don't want to deal with. So they don't watch 12 Years a Slave. They don't want to see Mandingo. They don't want to watch all of the roots. They don't want to see those movies because it deals with the trauma that we've been through and we don't want to tap into that thing. Because if we tap into that, Guess what you'll do? You'll return to God and you'll return to who you are as a people. Right. right. You cannot resist that thing. Read on. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Now, the people that bought and sold us and brought us to slavery, what is God calling them? What does God call them people that bought and sold us? Are they your friends? Read After. again. Then you shall be what? After. Sold unto your enemies. Sold unto your what? Enemies. Sold unto your what? Enemies. So what were the people that bought and sold you? Would your friends rape your mother right in front of you before you get married, before a husband marries her? Would your friend hang you on a tree for trying to read? Bring it out. Would your friend whip your back 20 lashes for wanting to be free from oppression? Would your friends take your new babies, newborn babies, tie them up as gator bait so they can take those alligators and make profit off of them? Bring it up. Instead of using what they use today as gator bait, a pig or something like that, as bait to draw the gator in. They use you so-called black babies as gator bait to trap gators, then he catch them, shoot them in the head. You watch that movie, Croc People or something, Swamp People. That whole show is about them um, hunting gators. And they use a big chunk of meat to, to get those gators. They go out on the boat, they see a gator swinging on the bait, they find it, pop the gator in the head. Your babies was used as that. That's your history, gator bait, look it up. It's all over the, the, the internet. Got, um, uh, memorabilia about it. Would your friends do that to you, so-called black man? 
No, read it again. And therefore, there and, y'all shall do what? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. You shall be sold unto your enemies. The problem with our people is we don't know who our natural born enemies are. A dog knows that a cat is his enemy. Right. A lion knows that his natural born enemy is a hyena. Bring it up. Right? What in the world is wrong with so-called black people to understand that we are at war? Not a physical war. Our battle is not to fight our enemies with guns and knives. Right. Our battle is to fight our enemies with our repentance, coming back to our heritage so that God can deal with us as his people again. Yes. That's right. We're losing that war, though, because we don't understand who our enemies are. Read. You can finish it off. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. And it says no man's going to redeem us from this captivity. How y'all sisters doing? Can I ask you a question? Oh, okay. Oh, you got a flyer right there. Let me ask you a question. What's your nationality? <laughs> and does your nationality matter? It shouldn't. Give me Hosea 1 real quick. Because it says no man is going to re redeem us out of our slavery. We've tried for a lot of years, right? We've been, we're still fighting to this day for equality, right? But the slaves were free. If we were freely, if we were really given and liberated from captivity, why in the world are we still fighting for equality now? Bring it up. Hundred, oh, over hundreds of years later. Let me show you something real good. Hosea 1. Hosea chapter 1. What's your name, sis? Monia, what's your name, sis? Fatima. Monia, Fatima, what's your name again, bro? Roland. Roland. Meet Roland. We're going over nationality and heritage today. We're not going to hold you up for long, but we need to show you something important about that fly. You say you read it? Let me show you what's important about you knowing your nationality. Read that. Hosea chapter 1 and verse 10. And especially you, bro. Your job eventually is going to have to be to come over on this side here, start keeping God's laws, and compelling your people to come in like Christ said. Right. Read. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. It says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Read. Which cannot be measured nor numbered. We can't be measured or numbered now. They call us a minority in this earth today. If they understood that all of these people and then some, the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans were all one people, if we understood that, we would not think of ourselves as minorities. We would understand that we're actually the majority on the planet earth. Right. But they call minority to do what? To, to jack up our minds. Read that though. And it shall come to pass. Go ahead, it shall come to pass. That in that place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. In that same place where we came over on slave ships and they call us black, African American, Negro, nigger, colored. How in the world is your nationality colored? Bring it up. I laugh when I hear that. Oh, we're colored people. This is a colored water fountain. Are you serious? But our people sit there and accept that thing. Saying that you're colored is a mockery of, of, of the most high guys. It makes no sense. Read. There it shall be said unto them, uh -huh. ye are the sons of doing, bro? Good. Ye Good. are the sons of the living God. Because in that land where we came over on slave ships, that we're so ashamed to even associate ourselves with today, where our mothers were raped, where our fathers were emasculated and whipped, their backs whipped, hung from trees. Strange fruit, like Billie Holiday brought out that song, and she was persecuted and ridiculed for telling the truth. Right. For exposing our enemies for their own wickedness. Read. There it shall be said unto them, uh -huh. ye are the sons of the living God. In that same land, you're going to be said that you're actually a children, you're the, of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You're not black. You are from the tribe of Judah. You're not Hispanic. You're from the tribe of Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar. You are what? It's in the same place where you said you are not my people. Read. Ye are the sons of the living God. You're going to come back to who you really are. What? That, that you are the sons and daughters of the living God. But here's the point. Read. Then shall the children of Judah. No, read. Read again. Then shall who? Then shall the children of Judah. It says, then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel. It didn't say, then shall the African Americans or the black people or the Spanish people. Right. It says, then shall the children of Judah and the children of what? Israel. Be and Israel, you cannot be delivered from captivity. You cannot be um, bought, as they say, no man shall redeem you from the slavery unless you identify yourself with your true nationality, your true heritage. Right. Then shall the children of Judah again. Then shall the children of Judah Go ahead. and the children of Israel uh -huh. be gathered together. Be gathered together. So that's how you're going to be gathered together. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. 
Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.